Here comes a new challenger! Hello there everyone and welcome to Smash Analysis featuring Steve from the Funny Minecraft game. This, yeah, him. You know, it's kind of funny how it, it took this character for people to finally feel like a character did belong. And I mean in terms of model quality, right? Because, boy, does this character, like, he... <laughs> uh, they just don't look like they belong in Smash, right? Like, their style just contrasts the game so much, it's so weird. But I guess here we are, right? Here we are. So let's get right onto it. Now, as you can see, we have Alex here. Usually I have a character to compare the, well, the character I'm analyzing with, but considering the circumstances, Steve is basically his own unique character. There's not really a character I could compare him to to prove whether or not he's a better version or a worse version of a character. He just sort of plays his own game in his own way. and. I think that's why you'll see a lot of play from this character, because it isn't like, for instance, you could make the argument that like, why play Duck Hunt when you have a character like Snake, or Zelda, you know, why play Zelda when you have Snake, you know, is, is what I'm basically getting at. Like, in Ultimate, there are characters that are just better versions of other characters because we have so many fighters that it's kind of hard to give every character a unique role, right? The only reason why you'll play say duck hunt or zelda is because you like those characters and you want to represent them because that's how much you like those characters you know you could just play a better version of how those characters play but you choose to play those characters because you like those characters you like their play style even if they're a worse version steve however despite being considered a high tier for most people you'll never see him really be compared to any other character because of how his game plan is so let's talk about certain aspects to Steve. You know, let's get the, the quick things out of the way. Yes, Steve has combos. Really good ones at that, right? He touches you and, and suddenly you're taking at least 35, 50, potentially 80. If the Steve or the you know, Steve player is able to read your DI and where you're going, right? That makes sense to me. That makes sense to you too, I hope. So yeah, Steve just has a lot going for him in terms of combo potential. Even with wood, he can still get many moves off, right? Like, many hits off. You'll take a lot of damage, and, you know, you're gonna be put in a bad spot. Despite Steve's smaller than average normals, right, compared to other characters, you would think this be a hindrance, and while range is a hindrance for Steve at times, I believe, personally, that it doesn't hinder him as much as people may think, purely because of this. This aspect of his game plan is what makes him strong. Because you know, and I know, that you'll never pick the best option all the time. I saw Smash tried arguing that Steve was the worst character in the game, but the way he kind of explained his points was that as long as you pick the perfect option every time, then you win. But that goes with any character. Yes, if you pick the best option at every time, of course you're gonna win. Of course the character you're fighting against is gonna seem bad in comparison, but you can't always do that. No person is that perfect to always pick the best option. The only thing you can do is when you're fighting against your opponent to know what their habits are and punish them for that. That's how you beat the per- that's how you beat a character. You don't beat the character, you beat the person and their mindset. And with Steve, right, this whole mining aspect to him is really why he works. Because, yes, we can all talk about him building, right, him setting up these walls so he can mine safely, and all this sort of stuff, but you see, people are forced to go after Steve. Because if they don't, not only does he get iron, right, and potentially better tools, right, which in turn not only boosts his combo potential, but his damage output as well. Like with wood, it took me three or four, you know, up airs and a fair, a sweet spot fair to get 35 damage around there. 
but with iron it just took me three axe swipes and i got it obviously the sweet spot is the back of the axe right so if i show this right here that's eight percent and that's 8.1 percent right let's say i mean it's eight percent but the hit stun is much different that's why you'll always see steve's trying to hit you from not from here but from here because it just has so much more hit stun you know the damage may not mean too much right because it's the same percent right but it's not whether or not the move does the same amount of percent it's whether or not what part of the move has the best combo potential and it's the beginning right that makes sense so because you're forced to approach steve right because he's gonna lay down these blocks and he's gonna be mining and there's nothing you can do about it right you're essentially forced to approach from above in most cases and since a lot of stages really every other stage besides final destination has a platform steve can hide under you're always going to be forced to approach from above right you're always going to be forced to approach from above which that's not fun that's not a fun spot to be in obviously because not only is steve getting his tools getting stronger material you know getting more materials making himself a stronger character with you know things like powered uh powered rail carts or having anvils right which lead to their own combo potential you know anvil uh downer anvil is really good for comboing anvil itself is an absurdly powerful move because the way they program this move is if steve is standing on it it does its max amount of damage which is its damage and knockback this thing will literally kill people at 60 to 80 you know even most heavyweights though they will be forced in if they like smack the stage sometimes it's an untackable at really early percents right and so because you're worried about this aspect to steve him grabbing these materials and becoming a stronger character overall you know because you're afraid of that you know you're gonna make mistakes and you're gonna try to constantly approach steve and steve is gonna be able to keep you away constantly all right all right steve is able to strafe you know away steve is able to essentially just keep you away constantly until they find the right opportunity to get those crazy combos and maybe even get some you know actual kills because of this not to mention that because you're forced to approach steve you're gonna try to do it safely but the thing is steve could always just fake out one element about steve is the sub smash right for instance now up smash you could clank with it so there are characters with moves that could clank with it and stop it in general but you see this is something i like to do personally and that is just look up since you can look up and down with steve and since he'll constantly he'll look up like that for his you know up smash i don't know why i pause there but it's up smash you can essentially make your opponent think you're about to go for an up smash then they air dodge or do something else and then you punish whatever option they they do right and you punish something even harder that up smash wouldn't have done right seems crazy but it's it's absurdly powerful you know what i mean it's absurdly powerful not to mention steve's ledge trapping is ridiculous i mean i'm pretty sure we've all seen the gimmer setup where it's i mean i'm not really i'm not potentially good at it um you know i just know it's something like that and like that right and it essentially covers all options except for like a handful of characters i'm not really good at doing it i highly suggest watching gimmer's video on the setup it's not that hard to set up i just don't remember it dead offhand on how to do it but it's it's a really strong setup right and there's just not much your opponent can do because you just hold shield and whatever option they take they're gonna get hit one way or another and they're gonna be sent flying potentially you know lose their stock so you know steve has amazing amazing ledge trapping 
amazing combo potential, amazing damage potential, right? Damage output, right? Yes, crazy combos, crazy grabs. I said combos earlier, but yes, uh, his grab is really good, right? First of all, it's not only just a tether, tether grab sort of, right? Because obviously you can't use it in the air, but you know, you have a kill throw and up throw. You have an amazing forward throw which sends at a pretty horrid angle for most people like i mentioned up throw kills and down throws a combo throw so steve you know has a lot of amazing tools but why is it that he's considered a high tier and this is my own two cents on the matter right because obviously the potential of this character has still not been tapped out yet right we start all finding new things what steve can do and crazy new setups and all the sort of stuff that this character is capable of but why do I think he's not a high tier? Well, while I mentioned earlier that because of how he plays, people are forced to approach him, characters, I still believe characters with super large disjoints, such as characters like Sephiroth, characters like Cloud, characters with big swords can essentially stop Steve in his tracks. And characters that can rush him down and get to him and basically force Steve to essentially not play the game abuse him pretty badly of course steve has an amazing recovery not only just with the whole gliding thing but the fact that he could just stall himself on, out in the air and all this sort of stuff and obviously if he gets high enough he could just place blocks to save himself you know but eventually you can run out of resources and there are ways to fully abuse steve in ways you might not even know were possible for instance, I brought this up in one of my videos. I believe it was one of the gimmick videos. And in that video, I explained that when you when you are crafting, if the person crafting is pushed away, then they don't get their tools. And if you break craft if you break the crafting table, mind you, you can only do it with weapons. If you force Steve to use up resources like TNT to try to do stunts like this, right? And you force Steve to basically use all of his blocks and all this sort of stuff, it's gonna bite the Steve player eventually. So because of that, you know, if you know how to abuse the character's weaknesses, then surely you will win. You know, you just make sure that you do everything in your power to essentially not allow the character to get his materials. But that's also not something a bunch of characters can do to stop him, especially if there's, you know, a platform above him, right? Because platforms in this game suck. Obviously, people have talked about being stuck on platforms numerous times and all this sort of stuff. Platforms are kind of sticky in this game, all right? So essentially, Steve has safe passage no matter where he goes, right? The thing is, like I mentioned, not every character can abuse Steve's weaknesses. And Steve will just be able to hurt, you know, basically beat out most characters, you know? Now, sure, you can SDI out of his combos and all this sort of stuff, but yeah, you could do that, but you'll still be put in a terrible spot. Sure, you can make him run out of his materials, but then again, he could always just find an opening, grab you, push you away, start mining, try to get materials back. Sure, there'll be times where you could argue, even with this, you know, even with, how do I say this? Even if you make sure he doesn't get his materials, even if he does, you can essentially outrange him depending on your character. And yeah, that's true. You can also make the argument that some stages are just going to make sure that Steve doesn't win. For instance, a stage like Lila is all iron, so you're not really going to be having much materials to work with other than iron. Once you use up all your dirt and wood, it's over. You're basically relying on iron the entire way through. And the thing about iron is that once you have, once it's all you have left, I don't know if you guys know this, all right, but iron in itself replenishes everything that you don't have even if you break 
this stupid crafting table. Well, I got no more dirt. And dirt doesn't replenish the crafting table. You know. Even if Steve is left to all of this, then, depending on the stage, he's gonna lose. So, a stage plays a big factor also. Universally, every stage will grant you gold, diamond, and I do believe iron to an extent. But most stages, you're just getting wood or nothing else, or wood, stone, sometimes you're just getting nothing at all. For instance, Town and City or Smashville, you only get wood, iron, gold, and diamond. But then you won't have stone, which in my opinion is much more preferred to have because that way you can still conserve your iron and just use up stone as a resource. You know what I mean? But, hey, that's just my opinion. That's my take on stone. I think stone is just really good to have if you want to conserve iron. And considering how reliant Steve is on iron, I mean, it's your down air. It's your down throw. It's even your cart. And if you run out of materials, it's your crafting table. It's your TNT. It's your blocks of wood. You know, it's your box. All right. So on some stages, he may just be useless. So again, I don't think Steve... I think Steve is annoying. My personal opinion. I think Steve is annoying to fight. Because obviously he could just camp you out with blocks. Continuously mine. And you're forced to approach him. And there's nothing you can do about it. Right? That's Steve's game plan. And it works. And it works well for him. It just doesn't work on every stage. It doesn't work on every stage, which means Steve will eventually get caught on said stages. The character's annoying even still, right? Because even with those setbacks, he could still be one annoying foe to face. With that all being said, this was my small analysis. Well, I guess small, but I don't know how long the recording has been. But my small-ish analysis on Steve. I do plan on making a sequel. Maybe my thoughts will change. Maybe my opinions may differ, and maybe there are things even you can tell me about in the comments below. I think, personally, Steve is very polarizing. Because, well, you have a character like Hero, who relies on RNG. At the very least, you know, he isn't stage-dependent, right? Because now, with Steve, you're stage-dependent. Whatever stage you go to will affect your gameplay. Slightly, sure but slightly enough that it can be a nuisance. And like I mentioned, there are gimmicks to deal with Steve's nonsense. And of course, I mentioned that whole trick with the... with, you know, crafting earlier. Steve could just cancel it and try to punish you for trying to move him, or just stand here and try to hit you. I know, because I've done this to so many Steves, and they hate it. I know they hate it. Because they leave the game, they leave my arenas afterwards. Because it's important to know, at least in Ultimate, how to gimmick some of these characters. Because some characters on themselves are gimmicks, and the only way to beat them is through gimmicking the gimmick. As weird as that may sound. Regardless, I still think Steve is a strong character. I think he's high tier currently, but who knows? With his ledge trapping and all that sort of stuff I mentioned before, he could end up being a top tier. You never know. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with Steve. I'm very interested. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. By the time this was recorded, it's before Pyron Mithra, the day before. And we'll see how those two characters turn out. I'm definitely interested, at the very least. I mean, I don't care for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But I'm always interested to learn a new fighter. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let's get to a thousand subs. Please, it would mean a lot to me. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. Take care of yourself. Be safe. I'll see you in the next video. Peace! Burning tread
Ha <laughs> ha!